Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer, good day to you. I hope you're having a great day and things are going well. Uh, in today's uh, video, we're going to be going over my choices for my next generation or my generation eight uh, home lab. So as you know, on my blog, VM Explorer, if you go into best of VMX, you can see uh, kind of all the notes and information around my different uh, blogs and videos and things of that and especially around my generation now i call my home labs uh, generation 8 because 8 aligns to uh, vsphere 8 uh, whereas the previous generation home lab i had was gen 7. sometimes there are hardware changes sometimes there are not so for example in gen 7 it was a complete refresh and i gave you a bunch of different parts here on how to do that right there are other generations here but today we're focused on 8 and some of the decisions around what I did, then we'll be taking a look at the uh, my choice as well. But first, uh, why did I choose to move forward? Well, uh, you know, a, uh, a very nice person, let's just say, made a donation to my blog and uh, gifted me with some Xeon Gold 6252 uh, uh, processors, which was quite nice. As you can see, they're, uh, they're quite beefy, 24 cores here, right? Uh, and so I had to make a decision. How do I move generation seven forward uh, i have a problem right uh, it's it's an older legacy system you know when we look at here we go to home lab the uh, build materials right we start looking at this this is the old uh, server system this is build your own based on super micro system boards uh, but older ddr3 and uh, the older uh, e5 uh, uh, 2640v2s which are now off the uh, hcl4 uh, Gen 8. So I could live with what I had and I could force the install and it probably would be fine and I could keep this hardware. But like I said, someone gifted me with uh, new hardware. So now I got to say, okay, well, do I just swap out the system boards? And if I do, how much is that going to cost? So looking at the 6252, uh, it's got a uh, 3647 socket. And when I look at the system board choices, I narrowed it down to just two. Uh, one was the uh, AS Rock. Uh, this EPC 621 uh, fit that socket, and it's actually uh, quite a nice system board. A lot of options, a lot of great I/O in it. Uh, had a lot going for it. You know, a lot of memory supports PMEM. You know, the Optane PMEM items. Uh, just a really uh, solid system board. So that was choice one. Uh, choice two uh, was the uh, Super Micro, the X11 SPL-F system board. Once again, decent I/O. Uh, only one NVMe slot, a uh, little bit more limited uh, on things, you know, not quite as uh, as nice. It was more of their uh, generation, uh, what they call it, a, like an efficiency or a cost-effective version, right? Um, all the slots that look like they're 16 actually turn out to be just X8. Um, so it had some, some, you know, pluses and minuses. So I looked at these two system boards, but then there's the cost. Uh, their cost, these system boards, is about $430 each. So it was very expensive to move into uh, a system board. And that's when I said, well, what are my other options out there? Uh, are there other systems that could accept this processor uh, that weren't necessarily a system board that I could just swap into my current home lab? What else could I do? And that's when I came across the Dell workstation. So this is the uh, Dell uh, 7820 uh, Precision uh, workstation, right? And I got to say, uh, you know, at first I was, uh, well, let's let's kind of look at it at least and see what it, it can do. Though we're looking at the price here of uh, $2,200 uh, $2, for this workstation. Uh, they're very readable, read, uh, very available on eBay uh, for just a few hundred dollars. And that's where I, I was able to uh, score these at a price about uh, $270 uh, for the system bare bones no ram no cpu that's kind of what i was looking for so i was able to get into this workstation as you can see it is uh, quite uh, modular a uh, lot of things you can put into it a lot of drive choices uh, it has u2 support which is nice for those uh, intel optane disks or nvme disks it supports sata disks so it's very flexible in that manner uh, it has a lot of good pcie options which were really cool right i enjoyed that uh, looking into those it was uh you know, trying to figure out how my existing cards are going to fit into the system and where they're going to, where they're all going to align to. So when I looked at it, I thought, well, man, it's it's pretty darn modular, right? Uh, it's going to give me a lot of different choices, a lot of different options here, um, and it may fit the bill, right? At two hundred, uh, you know, seventy bucks, it's a lot easier to swallow, so to speak, than the uh, four hundred and forty dollars system boards times three. 
So I decided to go with the 7820. Now it's been a great system. The only challenge I had with it, and this is already on my blog, is I had some issues with the firmware coming in because these were older and used. They had older firmware. That older firmware didn't support my processor type. Um, so it was kind of a chicken and egg problem, right? But working with my uh, vendor that I bought from eBay, they actually sent me uh, a Xeon Gold, or excuse me, a Xeon Silver processor that I could stick in there, get it up, get it up and running. Uh, I just simply booted it to Windows, got its BIOS updated, and I was good to go. And you know, all the processors and RAM and everything were working. Uh, but when I look at these, I really like to go back to my um, design guide. Now this is a, a screenshot from the design guide. And again, you can find that here on uh, the VM Explorer blog. If you just go into the home lab guides, right? It's right here is where I went to, right? So looking at that, I kind of look at these things as I go through, you know, my overall initial cost, you know, compare and contrast. What can I do with the old lab versus the new lab, right? What can I bring along with me? How much is it gonna cost me? So I'm able to carry most of the components that I need over like uh, uh, my, uh, uh, Mellanox uh, Connect X3 cards are coming over, uh, the SSDs are coming over, things like that that I can bring over into the system. Uh, so that reduces my cost. And then I've got some donations that came in that helped as well. And we really made this very cost effective for to me to move. Had I not had all those things, I probably wouldn't have went this route. I probably went with a brand new, you know, build your own type of thing. Uh, but looking at, you know, the cost. Now, noise is important too. I really like these systems to be quiet. And I got to tell you, uh, the 7820 is whisper, whisper quiet. In fact, I think it's actually quieter than my own build your own system. Uh, the heat and power consumption so far, it's been pretty cool. And I've noticed it running very low wattage, but I still really need a chance to, to plug them all in at the same time and kind of get a, a, a good feel of how much they're going to be. And that kind of goes into monthly operational cost, right? Uh, how much are they going to cost to run once I get that wattage kind of figured out? Uh, footprint and uh, mobility right here. You know, again, that depends on the this one, but this system actually has a smaller footprint than my do-it-yourself. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter, and I kind of like that. Flexibility, uh, the 7820 has, like we said, a lot of flexibility, a lot of different modules, a lot of different drives, a lot of different PCI. Its only limiting factor is its power supply and the power connectors inside of it uh, for you to be able to connect things up. So uh, it's you could probably get a CD-ROM in there, but other than that, there's really no extra power connectors uh, four devices. The only exception, of course, is the uh, video cards, and it has plenty of power connections uh, for that. Um, it should have no problem with uh, uh, flexibility and bleeding edge technology should not be a problem for it either. It has plenty of I.O. to put in different cards and change things. Some of the items are on the HCL, which are nice. I like that. It has a built-in Intel NIC, which is good. Um, now, refresh cost. Now, this is where uh, it doesn't shine, right? Because is as this system ages and this processor falls off the HCL, I'm probably not going to be able to pull much out of it. Like I can't reuse the system board or upgrade its processor or do things like that. It's limited in that area. However, uh, it's so far ahead on the HCL right now uh, that it's going to be on there for quite a while. So I'm not too worried about that at this time. Speed to use is going to be pretty quick with a few mods and adding a few drives. I should be able to just plug it in, install it, and away we go. And with that, why don't we take a look at the uh, the hardware and we'll continue on from there. All right, let's take a look at the hardware now. So of course we're talking about that Dell uh, 7820 Precision Workstation and we're in the front here. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, several items up the front here. We got an option for a CD-ROM here. We also have a headphone jack and two USB-C ports, uh, USB 3.0 and SD card, and then also an additional uh, power button. Let's flip around to the back real quick. Here's the top view. As you can see, you know, this is a used system, so we expect some damage. You know, we got a little bit of dings here. It's not grade A, but uh, for the price, it uh, was uh, very nice. All right, so let's take a look at the back of the system here. So one thing I liked about it was a 950 watt power supply, which is nice. Uh, easy to remove, just one quick pin and out it goes. Modular, right? That's what they're trying to do with this uh, 7820 was make it very modular. So the power supply could be uh, easy to replace and then boom, click, it goes right back in. Uh, going through the I.O. ports, 
We've got your basic audio ports, a COM port, PS2 ports, your keyboard mouse, the Intel i219 uh, port, or excuse me, network port, and then count them, 246 USB 3.0. Uh, this one came with the uh, NVIDIA Quattro uh, 600 card in it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it into the PCIe 1 slot, right? Because uh, video is really not important for ESXi. Really, what I'm inter more interested in is just getting some vid basic video output with this. Wished it was on the motherboard, but hey, the Precision Workstation is designed for uh, high output here for video cards, really not needing like, uh, you know, 2D graphics. All right, let's switch around back up to the front and we'll take a look there. All right, so we started here, but you wanna say, you know, this, this system is very modular and of course it is. If you click on this pin right here, this lock release, you can pull the front panel off. Now that came off pretty easy. There's actually a lock mechanism, which is in here, right here, that I actually lock that. So if you haven't, uh, if you're trying to get this and it's really hard to push, you'll have to open up the case. And when we open up the case, I'll show you where that's at. So let's open this up and we could take a look at the uh, four bays. So mine came with uh, basically two SATA drives, right? So two SATA ports right here. But these other two ports look a little different. As you can tell, um, they've kind of got this uh, smaller square thing. These are for NVMe connected drives. But what's interesting about them is they're using a uh, U2 adapter right so this particular device when it goes all the way through and back into the back plane connects into the motherboard and you can actually run uh, not only NVMe drives here but you can run those great Optane discs that's right same port here's their Optane uh, drive I'm going to stick in so in it goes a little hard with one hand but let's see there it goes, you get the idea. It clicks in right there and uh, we're good to go. So now I put an Optane disc in there and I can put an NVMe here if I wanted to, but really what I'm gonna do, eventually, when I get this up and running, is I'm gonna put another Optane disc in here. So now we've got two Optane discs up front, right? One and two. I've got a boot disc, which is probably gonna be 400 gig uh, SSD, and then a larger drive, about three gig, or th excuse me, three terabytes of uh, uh, SATA disc for extra storage for my ESXi deployment. That's kind of what I'm targeting right now. I might change that a little bit, but that's kind of how it's working out. This will be used for the vSAN you know, cluster right here, these two guys, and we'll run ESA. We'll get that going as well, but let's take a look on the inside now. All right, looking at the inside here, let's go ahead and remove the bezel or the shroud for the CPU and memory. Now, I've already pushed the clips back on both sides. We're just gonna pull this out, get it out of the way. As you can see, uh, it's designed to uh, move that airflow from the RAM on the left or right and the CPU in the middle as it's designed right there. So this system is a socket uh, 3647, uh, right? Uh, it has uh, six memory module slots, three on the bottom and three on the top. This uh, particular CPU I have in here is the Xeon Gold 6252, and those are 64 gig RAM modules in here, give me a total of 384 gigs of RAM. Yes, 384 gigs of RAM per system, and I'll be putting three of them together. So let's take a look at it here. What's really nice about this system uh, is its modularity. Right, so we can do all types of different cards in here, which are nice. So let's remove this. Okay, we're gonna lift that up. I'm gonna pull this card out. So if we're looking at the uh, uh, PCIe slots here, you might say, wow, look at all those PCIe slots. There's uh, quite a bit going on here. Even though they have a standard uh, old school uh, 1X down here, uh, the old school PCIe, there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, X16s. Well, they're not all X16. So, for example, uh, this first one down here is a uh, 4 or 1, X4 or X1, right? The one above it is actually kind of nice. It's a 16, full 16, and it's 75 watt. Uh, that's important uh, for a couple of different reasons. Your standard uh, PCIe uh, slot is only going to be uh, 25 watts of power. Uh, whereas these are 75 watts, there's one here, and there's also one right here, X16, 75 watt. That allows you to put 
put in some uh, beefier uh, video cards or actually one of those uh, NVMe cards that holds uh, four uh, NVMe drives, which is kind of handy, especially if you're doing uh, you know, like vSAN or, or things of that nature. So you've got 401, uh, a 16. Uh, you've got a uh, another one here, which is an X16 slot, but only it's a PCIe 1. That's where I'm going to put the video card, right? I don't need full width video in this uh, server. I just need standard video for output, right? So that's where this one's going to go. Uh, again, we have the X16 75 watt. And then finally, the last one is uh, kind of dealer's choice. You have a, a PCIe uh, 16, right? But it's a 8, 4, or 1 choice on this one. So that's kind of nice. you got a bunch of choices here, right? So looking at the rest of the board, I went ahead and removed the, uh, the can here. Uh, this piece right here was actually uh, kind of hiding and blocking everything, so we couldn't really see uh, what was going on. So when we pull this out, we get a better look into the system, and we can kind of see the back plane and, and other things. I also removed the, uh, the fans out of the way here so that we could uh, have a better view uh, inside the chassis. So let's start from the bottom, and we'll work up from there. Uh, starting at the bottom here, you can see we have these uh, connectors here. Uh, this one is a uh, six uh, pin, right? These are for video cards. Um, same with this one here, only it's an 8-pin uh, for video. So we can actually uh, uh, plug in our video cards nice, and it's all wired up really nice. So it connects up in here, right? So right there. And as they follow down, they kind of go down this way and wire in. So they're pre-wired, and that's actually... Uh, a really good deal. Now some of the cables in here, for example, uh, this guy right here is a power connector for uh, this back plane right here. And this is the back side of the SATA. So the SATA cables also run down here and they run to the system board along the bottom. Also, you might notice that there are other uh, USB uh, front panel connectors here that actually run through this channel and then filter up into the front panel uh, controls here as well. That's where we saw those uh, USB-C connectors, the power button, things of that nature. Uh, there's one extra power cable hanging out here, and that's actually used for uh, a CD-ROM drive or something, some other sort of power that you want to put into uh, this slot right here that goes into the system. Uh, the uh, Optane cables are a little bit hidden here, but they're actually going to be right there. And those guys right there, uh, they're actually removed right now, right? They plug out of here and they plug into this back plane to support the, uh, the Optane system, right? So uh, they'll run that whole length and you can put Optane drives in here, the U2 drives, that type of stuff. Uh, this particular case, what I'm going to do is eventually I'm going to pull this out, this back plane out, and actually run those cables and make this uh, kind of U2 uh, ready to go. So folks, uh, let's see, one other option, yeah, the uh, disconnect, sorry, I forgot to mention the lock and unlock. We talked about that earlier. Uh, this will lock the front panel, so when it's in, that means that the trigger right here on the side to release the front where we got access to those drives won't work. It'll be locked in, so we just come up here, push the unlock button, button sorry, <laughs> and then just here, and then it'll pop open. So folks, uh, that's a uh, kind of a quick overview, a quick look of the uh, 7820 on the inside. Uh, I hope this uh, video was uh, useful to you. And if you have any uh, questions or suggestions or other things, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much. Have a great day.